Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Fun, fun video coming up that I think this this collection deserves its own video. But first, it's mail day. Finally got to my P.O. box for the first time in weeks, and I had a small package from Jason, longtime subscriber, longtime commenter on my channel. Goes by ASMR People. Great contributor here. So, Jason, thank you for this. And he uh, included a little letter. And you know somebody is a big follower of your channel when they know you well enough to include a letter and two cards that fit you perfectly. And the note is, is perfect. So he, he sent me two gifts. I'll show you them in a minute. He says, the first card is a pre-war baseball card of what I like to collect, which is diamond matchbooks. Specifically, it's a 1937 Kurt Davis. So this is a, a matchbook from 1937 which is awesome. I love, love vintage oddball. Would 37 be called pre-war? I guess it would be pre-war. Uh, and, and he writes, he even says, Jason writes, he had a career war of almost 40. So you talk in my language here, Jason. This is perfect. I love talking war. And, and then he says, he's not a Hall of Famer, but he certainly belongs in the Hall of Very Good. It's, it's perfect. And he says, this card's in pretty good condition for diamond matchbooks. The most important thing with matchbooks is that they have the striker, which is up here. And of course, I'll take this tape off, which is not on the card. And then he says, buying a matchbook without a striker is equivalent to buying a card with the corner torn off. I love this. This is fascinating. I did not know this. I was not even aware of these. But back then, uh, post-depression, or maybe as the country was pulling out of the recession, matchbooks, matchbook collecting was very, very popular. And then he says he has another copy of this and it's only worth $12 to $15, so no big deal. Jason, it is a big deal. Thank you for this. I love, love this as a gift. And then Jason has to go and ruin it with the gift number two. He says he found it on eBay and thought of me. Not only is it a Diamond King's autograph of a Hall of Famer, so if you follow me and you know me well, you know where this is going already. It's the only Hall of Famer I hate. It's Jack Morris. <laughs> and then he writes, it's probably your favorite Hall of Famer, Jack Morris, LOL. He knows, he knows. But this, I didn't have this, and I do. I did want it. And I even put, I have a website out there. It's uh, junkwaxhero.com or thejunkwaxhero.com. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I barely do anything with it except update my Diamond Kings list and uh so this is one that i have on there and on that on that list i write i want it even though i hate him so thank you jason this is awesome i really appreciate it and then he goes on to talk about how much he enjoys my channel so i appreciate that and he, and he also says you know something i want to say he says with a job and family i understand that time you spend on youtube is at the expense of other activities and he's right to some extent um i used to spend this time running I spend about five hours a week on my channel. I used to spend this time running, and I can't run anymore, so I do it. This has be become my hobby. Is it more than five hours? Maybe it's more than five hours, but it's certainly not ten hours a week. Uh, but I love this. I, you know, I, it's, it's fun. It's rewarding to me. And then he says, I know you make a few bucks doing YouTube, but it's probably below minimum wage, which is, which is true. Uh, eh, it's, right, it's, getting, it's getting better every month. So thank you, Jason. Much appreciated. This is awesome. Now I want to talk about Dan, another subscriber, new subscriber, emailed me over the weekend with the most amazing organized room of Red Sox cards and especially Carl Yastrzemski cards. So, you know, I am a Yaz collector. I'm not a super collector. Dan is a super collector. I am not. I am a collector of Yaz cards. Dan, 46 years old, started collecting in 1987, collected up through 2000, and then he started, picked it up again in 2011. So like a lot of us, he had that, you know, decade or more off. And I'm going to put pictures up here as I talk. His collection is outrageous. It is, it's so good. And the room, if you have a really organized room or collection like this, and you want to send me pictures, email it to me, thejunkwaxhero at gmail.com. I already have some from Tim, 
who I just got the pictures from him this afternoon. I will do another video at some point in the semi-near future, let's say in the next month. And um, I think I would love to do, I would love to do more than just Tim's in a video or maybe do multiple videos. So send me pictures of your room. I did this in December, it was hugely popular. And now it's a few months later and I have, I don't know, 1200 more subscribers. So do that, I would, uh, I would love to see your room or your collection if it's really organized and visible. I don't wanna see boxes of cards, uh, but check out Dan's here. So Dan tells me that he has all of Yaz's playing years cards, he figured, plus a lot of modern. He has about 5,000 Carl Yastrzemski cards, which puts my, uh, I don't know, 150 to 200 to shame. Uh, and then he has 50 autographs, four one of one autographs, several complete rainbows. I don't have any rainbows of anybody. I don't have any one of ones of anybody, let alone one of one autographs. His best card is a PSA 8 Carl Yastrzemski rookie, like this one right here, except mine is SGC 2.5. His is a PSA 8. His favorite card is a 1967 Carl Yastrzemski. Why is that his favorite? It does, why, why would a 1967 Topps Yastrzemski, that's his eighth card, uh, be his favorite? Here's the story, and I love this story. So when he was a kid in 1989, so he would have been um, 12 at that time in 1989. Yeah, 12 years old. He was in his local card shop and there was a 1967 Yaz card. It was 150 bucks and he couldn't afford it. So he, his, the LCS owner offered to do a layaway situation where every week he comes in and drops 10 or $20 off. So he had a paper route and every week he would drop 10 or $20 off until he got up to $60. And then when he went in to drop off more money one week, they had 1986 Donruss packs. This was at the height of the Jose Canseco hype, that rookie card, the 86 Donruss rookie card hype. I remember this well. I got this card for Christmas and it was my prized possession for years. So the 86 Donruss packs in 1989 were going for $10 a pack. And instead of putting $10 towards the 67 Yaz, he decided to buy one pack and wouldn't you know it, he pulled the Canseco. And the shop owner offered him his $60 back and the Yaz for the Canseco as a trade. And Dan did that trade. You know, you trade a, a Canseco rookie for a 1967 Yaz. Back at that time, it was probably a hard decision, at least financially, but now you look back on it, holy cow, what an amazing deal. And uh, so he has kept this card in his collection ungraded all these years. It looks like it's in really nice condition. It looks pretty nicely centered. Awesome, awesome story. So thank you, Dan, for sharing that with me. And that is this, I mean, the, the, his room, the room that he stores his cards in, his collection, it's the room of dreams. I want to have an office at some point in my life. At some point I will. Man, Dan, you have really, really done an awesome job. Again, email address, thejunkwaxhero at gmail.com. And I will, I, what I'd love to know is the story. What's the hook? What, what makes your collection interesting? How old you are? What years you collected? Things like that. And I'll probably respond back with questions about your collection. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great week.